Lonsdale. Amen. I'm so glad to be here. How y'all doing? You are an, an example of waterproof, weatherproof Christians. Amen. You brave the elements that came on out. I'm so glad. Brother Fred Twigger, glad to see you. Brother Fred thinks he might have found the church. He's been interviewing several. He said they're not nearly as warm and loving as his home church here, but he thinks he might have found one. So let's continue to pray for him. May he continue his uh, church life there in Ohio in a way as faithful as he was here. And he says hello to all of you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. We've got a great crowd this morning, too. It's wonderful to see everybody here. Upcoming events, UMW and UMM meet will 6 p.m. on the 23rd. PPR committee will have a meeting at 4 on January the 30th. Church council will meet at 4 on February the 5th. Our Super Bowl of Caring, our traditional um, fundraiser will be on the 12th. Please bring in any type of canned goods. That's always been a huge supporter of our food pantry. And if you look at our food pantry report, the wonderful volunteers that were here provided 116 boxes, serving 544 people. That's amazing. Amen. And I know there were lots of volunteers this week, and I know all the extra hands were so appreciated. Pastor Walter, birthday still going on. That's right. We're taking <laughs> canned ravioli, creamy peanut butter, and saltine crackers in honor of his monthly birthday on the 12th. Amen. Deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the 
Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives. For the God we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Jonathan and Rebecca are getting married on Friday. Congratulations to Jonathan and Rebecca. Jonathan's my spirit animal, so I'm just so happy for him. <laughs> Becky had a good report. Fantastic, Becky. Other ladies. We'll turn to concerns now on prayer requests. I know there's me and I, I put my friend Loretta on the clock on here. Barbara Lafayette. So, Donna Harbin. The family of Lori Church. Wanda Aper, Diane Grable, Dick Murphy, Patricia and Steve Underwood, Terry for the loss of her husband, the safe travels for all the family, all those victims of violence, Connie Wyrie, lift her up in her recovery, and the family of Sean Doyle, all our servicemen and women, all those unspoken prayers, the victim of the, of the car accident, Caroline Kendall, so Terry and Jamie and Nancy lift all them up. Lynn Slatton. Pastor, would you let us into our prayer time? We pray for Sister Janet Briggs, who's a lot of you know her. A very instrumental person in the life of Poston as well as in the life of Martin Chapel. So many of you have spoken to her from time to time. Um, please bear her in prayer. She's just, just out of the hospital with a serious illness and is recovering at home. So pray for her. We have uh, a lot to pray for this morning. Before we go into prayer, I'd like to thank um, Brother Ian Ankrum for being a special angel in the life of me and my family. Lord, bless and keep him. Um, this, this is the type of church that makes me want to say, your pastor's heart is glad. Amen? All right. Let's, let's go to the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for how you blessed us, how you have intersected our lives with your presence, how you've given us birthdays and anniversaries and celebrations. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless us and situate us where we can be a blessing to others. Those who are without, those who are lost, and those who are last, and those who are least, Lord, help us to make a difference in their lives with the blessedness you've given us. Oh, we have some who are sick this morning, some who are infirm, some who do not have the strength in their body to come and be with us like once they did. We ask that you bless them. We thank you for those who are recovering 
for sadness and bereavement and, and have returned to our presence. We thank you for Sister Jewel and her being here. We thank you for our, our own brother Jimmy, who is recovered and is back with us. We thank you, Lord, for uh, brother and sister Winston, who are back, back with us today. Lord, you are so good to us. We just thank you. And we are embarking on, several of us, on the uh, travel this week. We ask that you would go ahead of us, that you would be with us, that you would be behind us, that you would be over us, and that you would be supportive of us as we go to involve ourselves in the worship and celebration of holy matrimony. Now, Lord, for the rest of our time here today, bless the preached word. Bless the one who will be presented. The music, the reading of the scripture. Those who are viewing from a distance, that the worship will be meaningful <coughs> and that it will affect change in the lives of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Well, Brother Jimmy, as I told you last week, you know by now that there are several people in this wonderful congregation who are looking to see you this morning. Amen? Well, I'm looking to see those that gave the extra 500, because oh. all I got to do is see them. Would y'all please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> They may want to see y'all back in the heaven. I don't know. <laughs> All I can tell y'all who, who gave five of love, Jim is here. Amen. <laughs> and we're glad that he is here. So now it's time for us to worship the Lord by way of giving. And uh, we have a ways to go in this new year. We're going to start off running. We just about got January beneath our belt. But we have some things we need to accomplish this year. And we need your participation. Look at the bulletin. The bulletin is a gauge. Michael does such a wonderful job of where we need to go from here. Somebody say amen. Amen. When you see those numbers low, that means me and you, we're going to have to do significantly more. Say low. 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 That, was, low. that was low. So low I can hear you. Say low. Low. Now say more. Mo. When it's low, Mo. you go more. Amen. Y'all got it. That's a quick suit. Let's do that. So, Brother Jimmy, you and your tribe, are you ready? They're ready. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed opportunity to worship you by way of giving. Bless every gift and every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give.
chapter 4, and it's verses 12 through 23. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zabulon and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee, and the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. They immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Did you hear what Sister Carolyn said at the end when she talked about the scripture? What did she say at the end? This is what the word, the word, word of God. God. And what did you say? Thanks. 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 That is a type of call and response. She made a declaration about the word of God, and you and me, knowing that what she said was true, we respond with thanksgiving and praise to the word of God. That is a type of call and response. As we go forth today, we're going to talk about call and response. Last time we were here, we, we talked about the call of Andrew, and subsequently Andrew went and called his brother Peter. We see the same two characters in today's biblical narrative, but we see another call story. <clears throat> are they different? They are different because of the timeline between them, but I want to share with you that this probably was not the first call when Jesus walked by the lakeside and said, follow me. And our Bible says immediately. There's also an indication to me that there was an ongoing conversation because Andrew and Peter had been discussing following Jesus. Jesus may have been up and down that sort of shoreline many times talking about them, about how their lives can be changed. I rather think in my mind Jesus came by just the way he's come by here this morning to say it's time. Brothers, we've been talking about it. Your competitors down the line, we've been talking about it. I'll let you come back home and say goodbye to your father. I'll let you come back home to me and your neck. I'll let you come back home and get your house in order. Now is the time Sometimes Jesus calls us more than once, and whenever my mother had to call me more than once, my name got long all of a sudden. She said, Walter Jr. I say, yes, ma'am. But when my response was not good to her call, she would say, Walter Henry Lee Cross Jr. And I would immediately not only say yes, ma'am, but I would follow myself in swift motion. Amen? <laughs> Moving in that direction. This is what happened, y'all. They arrested John the baptizer. Why? John the baptizer exposed the king's wife and sister in law. Listen to how I say that. Wife and sister in law. We don't know what happened to brother-in-law. Brother-in-law was deceased. We don't know what was the cause. But John, the baptizer, exposed her and him 
but living inappropriately. That was the call that he made. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. She got good and bad. And she manipulated, forced her husband to arrest John and to subsequently kill John the baptizer because he was telling the truth. Amen? A lot of times, church, you're going to be shut down to tell the truth, but don't stop telling the truth. That's good. Immediately after that, we see Jesus left and went home. Now we have to put the synopsis, and that word means similar gospels together, get this timeline. As soon as, as John was arrested, Jesus left town. I don't think he was afraid. I don't think he went into hiding. He knew he had to complete what John started. Now, how do we know this? He first went home, took the scroll out of the vestibule, stood up to read his own commission for ministry, and sit down to teach. The people at home kept looking at Joseph Jr. They kept looking at Mary's little boy. They couldn't wrap their mind around, is this Jesus the Christ? And they got upset and said, who are you to come back here and tell us what's what? And they forced him out of town. Then he went to where we pick him up today, Capernaum. Nazareth was his hometown. Capernaum became his ministry center. He often will return there for rest and reflection. Now, I'll let you just read about a region around there, like just like Knox County is around Knox, <coughs> the region of Zebulun and Nephtali. It said there was a bright light that came to them. That, that, that was a center of darkness. If you would look into the Old Testament, you'll see when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he came up with a plot to embarrass God the Father. So he allowed demonic forces to intermarry with humans. And they developed this supersized species over nine feet tall, powerful. They had some mental illness. They had some other opportunities. But it was a super race that Satan thought would destroy humankind. But God, somebody say, but God. But God. But God showed up one day in the hand of David, and David went up against Goliath, who was one of these Nephtali, and destroyed him with a stone, and showed the enemy, whatever you do genetically, I can undo miraculously. Amen. Amen. Now, that's why that region was considered the very pit of darkness. Jesus didn't run there to hide. He run there to stand up one day and say, repent, every one of you. Now, where have you heard that before? John, when he hit the street running, he said, repent, repent, turn around, change your mind. So again, we see Jesus making a call. And preferably the response was to, again, follow him. Let's bring it here this morning. <clears throat> we have talked about Andrew, Samson, his brother. We've talked about Jesus <coughs> calling him again from the boat. And here's our third item of consideration. Somebody here or somebody on the screen, you've heard the call of Jesus. Maybe it was not audibly. Maybe it was an indication in your spirit or in your mind that the Lord has work for you to do. And you went back to fishing. You went back to doing what you were comfortable doing. You returned to your previous lifestyle but God is so gracious. Until God decided to stop by here on January the 27th and call me and you one more time. 
Can you hear it? Church? Video land? Once again, he is saying, follow me. Now, what's your response? You've heard the call. What's your response? You can't deny the call. What's your response? Well, I got a family. Well, I got this situation. Well, I got this debt. But the Bible says after they had spent time with Jesus, after he had talked to them about becoming fishers of men, the Bible says immediately. That means at once. That means right now. That means you might have to leave something or someone or some situation behind that got out of the boat. They ain't even finished mending the net, y'all. They got out of the boat. While the boat is still rocking, they going down the road with Jesus to Christ. You have a second chance. He's calling you this morning. Calling you again. Calling him. Deal with your hindrance and walk in obedience. Is that all right, church? Amen. Amen. Oh, I know it's a little hard, but the reward is great. The difficulty is leaving. The reward is in the following. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how you blessed us to recognize your call. Now our prayer is that you would help us with the response. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God love you. We're going to sing our part of him. And we're going to go out today receiving the call of God. We're going to respond in a way that will give him honor and glory. I have no idea what God's calling me to do. But I have no idea what he's calling me to do. But I know I'll answer. Yes. Yes to your word. Yes to your way. Yes to your call. Amen. Yes, amen. Now I want you to stand all over this sacred building. Then the piano and organ sound great to, together today. Amen. Both of them have been a little sick, but they've been miraculously healed. And now they're back together again. Amen. And they so happy. The keys are tinkling on the ball of Hamilton and on the Allen Electric Console. And our two ambassadors of worship are doing their best to express worship to a word of God. Amen. Let's say amen for them. Amen. Now they're going to hit a massive call. That's going to be the call. The response will be for you to open your mouth and say amen. amen. And let's get started and sing our closing hymn. Amen.